This morning on Wake Up With Hope, the healthy foodie is back with another delicious recipe. We will have inspiring music, an insightful segment on unconditional love, and an incredible devotional thought from Pastor Don Bradshaw. Don't go anywhere. Good morning and happy Wednesday and welcome to a new episode of Wake Up With Hope. Good morning, friends, and we're so thankful you're with us on this beautiful fall day. October is nice and cool in most places around the United States, so we encourage you to take advantage of the cooler weather and get out for a nice walk. It will help your mind and your body. Oh, it sure will. And it's National Medical Assistant Day. And we want to take a moment to say thank you to all the medical assistants out there. Thank you so much for making doctors' lives smoother. <laughs> your work is truly appreciated. Oh, indeed it is. And friends, we hope our program today will help you to get closer to Jesus as you abide in Him. You know, we have a lot, a mm -hmm. lot in store for you today. So let's take a look back at what took place on this day in history. On this day in history in 1983, a suicide bomber drove a truck filled with explosives into the U.S. Marine barracks in Beirut, killing 241 American military personnel. On the same morning, a separate suicide attack on a French barracks two miles away claimed the lives of 58 French soldiers. The U.S. Marines were part of a multinational force deployed to Lebanon in August of 1982 to oversee the Palestinian withdrawal. From the start, the mission faced numerous challenges and an increasing number of casualties. You know, friends, Satan often intensifies his attacks against us when we make the decision to follow Jesus wholeheartedly. He knows that a life fully surrendered to Christ is a life of power, and he knows that. You know, the Bible tells us in 1 Peter 5, 8, to be sober-minded, to be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. You know, Satan's goal is to discourage, tempt, and distract us, especially when we are growing in our faith. You know, his attacks can come in, in different forms, such as temptations that appeal to our weaknesses, doubts that cause us to question God's goodness, or even discouragement when things don't go as planned. He may also try to create division and, and plant seeds of fear or use our past mistakes to make us feel unworthy. Mm -hmm. You know, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 11, encourages us to put on the full armor of God so that we can make our stand against the devil's schemes. You know, with God's armor, truth, righteousness, faith, salvation, and the word of God, we are equipped to resist the enemy's attacks. So in every struggle you face, remember that Jesus is greater than anything Satan can ever send our way. And when we stand in the power of the promises of Jesus, victory is surely ours. Amen. Thank you for those encouraging words. Well, the healthy foodie is back and in the kitchen this morning making delightful dukkha.
Have you ever experienced unconditional love? It is the kind of love found in 1 Corinthians 13. It is the kind of love that isn't based on what you do or don't do, but simply who you are. We have a special segment today on unconditional love as we learn from a furry friend on today's episode of Dog Tales. Can you imagine a world where humans love each other like our pets love us? My dog Cyrus has no idea who's at this door, but I can absolutely guarantee you something. When I ring this bell, he'll start to bark in excitement. <laughs> Not because he's a great watchdog, but at the joyful possibility of meeting someone new. He'll then come rushing to the door with his tail just about wagging off his hind legs. When he sees it's me, he'll wiggle around and try to lick me all over. Now I know that's a charming thought for many of you, but let's try it out. One of the things I love about Cyrus is his unconditional love and acceptance. He doesn't care what I look like, what colour I am, whether I'm skinny or fat, young or old, tall or short, whether I'm rich or poor. He doesn't even care if I forget to feed him or walk him, even if I accidentally tread on his tail. He gives out a whelp and then turns around to lick me. He just loves me and loves to be with me. He never expects things, never complains, never greets me here at the door with a scowl, no ulterior motives, just a wag of the tail as if to say, it's so great to see you, let's go and have some fun together. I find it interesting that quite a few people like to come to our home. I know why. It's not just to visit my wife Coralie and I, it's always Cyrus they seek out first. They look at him and have this big grin on their face trying to hide the fact that we play second fiddle to our dog. But that's exactly what unconditional love does to the one being loved. You can't help but want to love back. You feel a sense of purpose. You love being around the person and you look forward to the next time you get together. The Bible says, let us love one another for lovers of God. God loves us no matter who we are or what we've done. And he wants us to have the same attitude of love towards others. Cyrus here loves everyone. How about you? If you're enjoying today's show, share it with a friend or visit our website at hopetv.org slash wake up to see more exciting content. And check out our YouTube channel, friends. Simply search for Wake Up With Hope and keep up with each one of our episodes. You know, we hope you're enjoying our time with us this morning, but we have to take a short break right now. But when we return, we're going to have inspiring music. And later, John Bradshaw from It Is Written will be encouraging us with a spirit-filled message. Stay with us. For a minute, what kind of hope do you hold on to? We all hope for something. We have to in order to survive. Hope is what makes us transcend our circumstances and trust the possibility of a different outcome. It is a bridge between now and the future, a grip into what seems unobtainable. But is hope the same as a dream? Is it but an aspiration, an expectation? a deceiving gateway to frustrations. Real hope is not an illusion, nor wishful thinking, much less the presumptuous assumption that everything is going to be okay. True hope is an offspring of faith, the kind of faith that is firmly grounded in the Word of God, who cannot lie and never disappoints. Therefore, to hope is to wait and to move, to believe and to obey to know and be still when silence is all there is. But if your hope is in yourself or in others, 
Pause and think for a minute. It might be anything but true hope. If you're enjoying today's program like we are, please share it with your friends. Our website is hopetv.org slash wake up. Coming up right after the break, Pastor John Bradshaw from It Is Written shares a thoughtful message from the Bible with us. I stumbled and fell Evil is banished To eternal hell No more night No There's a mansion prepared 
Coming up right after the break, Pastor John Bradshaw from It Is Written shares a thoughtful message from the Bible with us. Welcome back to our program. How are you enjoying it this morning? Send us a message on Facebook and let us know. This morning, John Bradshaw from It Is Written is with us here today to share a reflective message from the Bible. Hey there, John Bradshaw here from It Is Written. I hope your day is going well. I have every confidence that if your day is given over to Jesus, He's going to bless you in ways that will be obvious and not obvious. Some of those not obvious ones won't be seen till later. So give your day to Jesus. If you haven't done it, do it now and expect Him to bless your day. If you're going through some challenges, I'm with you. God understands. I understand as far as possible. Uh, life isn't always rose is, is it? So, so hang in there and let God bring you through. He will, He will, He will. I wanted to tell you about a man who in his early 60s, around about early 60s, living 25 miles in a straight line from lower Manhattan, name was Rory McGrath, was surprised one day when a dozen police officers showed up at his home with their weapons drawn. What had he done lately? Well, nothing. Seriously. He had not committed any crime. He'd not broken any laws. He, he, he certainly wasn't thinking about what happened 41 years ago in England, in Leeds. The young man was Irish English, an Englishman of Irish extraction. He was living, he had lived in England through the troubles that took place in Northern Ireland. And as an Irishman, some people looked at him with suspicion because of what was taking place there at the time. So. Uh, out one night, probably had a few too many beers. There was a fight. There was a fight. The police were called. The police intervened and a policeman was assaulted. And word got out that Rory McGrath was responsible for the assault on the cop. Either it was him or he was one of several. He said, forget that. The police won't give me a fair shake because I'm Irish. He took off to Ireland. He's living in Ireland and then he decides he'd take a vacation to the United States. Well, before long, he was living in the United States permanently. He went home to England on occasion to visit, to visit, but he'd always go back to the United States. He settled in the United States. Things were good. Now, he knew that he was on the run from justice, but he figured, oh, that was so long ago. It was out of his mind. He certainly didn't think that for getting involved in a fight, he says he didn't even assault the cop. He had nothing to do with that. The last thing he was thinking was that you have a dozen police at your door with their guns drawn for something that happened more than four decades away on another continent. But that's why they were there. He spent 15 months on house arrest in his own home in New York State for this thing that happened 40 plus years ago. Then he was extradited to England. He spent seven months in a jail in Leeds awaiting his trial. And when the trial came up, the charges were thrown out. There was no evidence against him at all. Why did that happen? Oh, I don't know. Perhaps there was somebody in the police department in Leeds who said, one of our cops got assaulted and we'll make somebody pay. And perhaps they genuinely believed it was this fella. They went to a lot of trouble. What he did 40 plus years before was not forgotten and was held against him, in this case, unjustly. The man was not guilty of any crime. Ultimately, he came back to the US and got on with his life. If God were to look in your past, could he find anything back there that he could hold against you? That time you were immoral, that time you got in a fight, that time you were guilty of some crime, uh, that time you lost your cool. I mean, I don't know. You think about that. Could God find anything back there in your life? I mean, he might only have to go back to earlier this morning. Could he find something that he could bring to you and say, hey, we, we've got a real issue here? I mean, we both know the answer to that question. The answer is yes, of course he could. But does he? Hmm. In Isaiah 43 and verse 25, God says, I will remember your sins no more. That's how God treats you. I mean, imagine being God and having something against every person who ever lived because as the Bible says, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But God's not that tiny. He's not that silly. He, he, he doesn't hold a grudge like that. 
But you know, there are a lot of people making their way through the world today who don't have that picture of God. They think God is out to trip them up or get them back or visit upon them some kind of punishment for their missteps years and years ago. Here's what you do. Of course, you go to God and you say, I am sorry for my sins, because after all, it was our sin that nailed Jesus to the cross. Our sin has misrepresented God before the universe. And so we say, God, forgive me. Doing that does numerous things. It's very helpful to recognize your own sinfulness. It's simply good for you on an emotional, psychological level. You recognize the Godness of God, your place in God's picture. We go to God and say, I'm sorry, would you forgive me for the wrongs that I have done? When you genuinely pray that prayer, you know that God says yes. And someone's gonna say, well, what does he mean genuinely? What I mean is genuinely. If you're serious about it, Lord, please forgive me. He'll forgive you. Then what does he do every time you stumble? Does he throw all your sins back in your face? No, he doesn't do that by any stretch of the imagination. God says, I will remember your sins no more. What God is interested in doing is separating us from our sins so that our sins don't separate us from God. All that stuff that's in your past, you can afford to just let it go because God's not hanging on to it. If it's back there, God's let it go too. If you want it gone, it's gone. So sometimes what, you'll, what we'll do is we'll confess our sins and then we'll feel so bad about something we did back then that we just can't let it go. And we let it follow us around, kind of like a shadow. We let it follow us around and make our life a present day misery. Christianity frees you from all of that. And then I've mentioned this before, but I'll mention it again. You get people who say, but I can't forgive myself for what I've done. Well, that's okay if you can't forgive yourself because God doesn't ask you to forgive yourself. There's nothing in Scripture about forgiving yourself. That's little more than psychobabble. What you do is you accept God's forgiveness and you go on. No one made you Jesus. You are not your own priest. So what people really mean is, oh, I find it hard to deal with or to live with the things that I've done. How do I let that go? It's not forgiving yourself to different things. How do I live with what I've done? Well, maybe with some difficulty, maybe. I mean, if you back the car out the driveway and run over your neighbor's child, that's gonna stay with you. And it probably should, particularly if you were careless. But, but you, you move on, you do your best, you move on, you move on, you move on, you move on. You don't hang on to those unfortunate things in your past. An accident's an accident, but what you're talking about is a sin. How do I forgive myself? I got involved in an extramarital affair. I, 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 I wounded somebody. I yelled at somebody. I, I broke up my sister's relationship with her boyfriend. You don't forgive yourself. You feel bad about that, but you don't forgive yourself. God forgives you, and you can go through life saying, I might feel lousy about this, but I feel forgiven, or I believe I'm forgiven because God has forgiven me. That poor man, something in his life from 40 plus years ago, suddenly appeared at his front doorstep and he had to confront what happened a long time ago. He got off, there were no charges that stuck and that's a good thing. What are you doing about what happened in your life a long time ago? Are you carrying it around like Pilgrim heading towards the celestial city in Pilgrim's Progress with that burden on his back? What he did was he laid it down at the cross and you can do the same thing. Don't you carry around the hurts and the scars and the pains and the sins from yesteryear. God lets it go. His promise is, I will remember your sin no more. That I believe you will find to be exceedingly freeing today. Have a great day. God bless you. Thank you, Pastor John, for those encouraging words. And friends, thank you for watching Wake Up With Hope today. Now, don't forget to visit our website at hopetv.org slash wake up to learn more about what we have going on. And be sure to tune in tomorrow. We'll have an exciting Reflections of Hope episode, a special feature on puppies, and Dr. John Peckham will share more from his series on knowing God. And if you enjoyed today's message, visit hope.study to receive your free Bible study guides designed with you in mind. Again, friends, that's hope.study, you will be blessed and encouraged. And before we go, we have a Bible promise for you. And today's promise is found in John chapter 1, verse 12. It says, but to all who believed him and accepted him, he gave the right to become children of God. Mm, amen. You know, what a beautiful promise and reminder that we are children of God. And friends, we hope you have a wonderful day and we can't wait to see you tomorrow. Let's pray together. Father in heaven, thank you. 
Thank you so much that we can have such an awesome, incredible identity in Christ as your sons and daughters. And today, Lord, we take it to heart. We choose to believe who we are in your sight. And we thank you for your amazing grace. So bless us today, Lord, with this hope. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Amen.